Good day everyone. It is nice to see you again. Welcome to our any learning as our learning community. Lesson 2. Systemic Inflammatory Response Syndrome, or SIRS. Systemic Inflammatory Response Syndrome is a systemic inflammatory response to a variety of insults, including infection, referred to as sepsis, ischemia, infarction, and injury. Generalized inflammation in organs remote from the initial insult characterizes SIRS. A systemic inflammatory response can be triggered by many different mechanisms, including the following. Mechanical tissue trauma, such as burns, crush injuries, and surgical procedures. Abscess formation, such as intra-abdominal and extremities. Ischemic or necrotic tissue, such as pancreatitis, vascular disease, and myocardial infarction. Microbial invasion such as bacteria, viruses, fungi, and parasites. Endotoxin release, such as gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria. Global perfusion deficits, such as post-cardiac resuscitation and shock states. And regional perfusion deficits, such as distal perfusion deficits. Systemic inflammatory response syndrome results to multiple organ dysfunction syndrome. The prognosis for the patient with multiple organ dysfunction syndrome is poor, with mortality rates of 70% to 80% when three or more organ systems fail. The most common cause of death continues to be sepsis. Survival improves with early goal-directed therapy. Collaborative care for patients with systemic inflammatory response syndrome and multiple organ dysfunction syndrome focuses on prevention and treatment of infection, maintenance of tissue oxygenation, nutritional and metabolic support, and appropriate support of individual failing organs. Manifestations and management. Under respiratory system, signs and symptoms are as follows. Development of acute respiratory distress syndrome, such as severe dyspnea, tachypnea, Partial pressure of oxygen slash fraction of inspired oxygen ratio is less than 200. Bilateral fluffy infiltrates on chest x-ray. Pulmonary artery wedge pressure is less than 18 mm mercury. Ventilation perfusion mismatch. Pulmonary hypertension. Increased minute ventilation. Decreased compliance. And refractory hypoxemia. Management includes. Prevention optimize oxygen delivery and minimize oxygen consumption, mechanical ventilation, and positioning. Under cardiovascular system, signs and symptoms are as follows. Myocardial depression, massive vasodilation, decreased systemic vascular resistance and blood pressure, decreased mean arterial pressure, increased heart rate, stroke volume and cardiac output, systolic and diastolic dysfunction and biventricular failure. Management includes volume management such as central venous or pulmonary artery catheter for hemodynamic monitoring, increased preload via volume replacement, arterial pressure monitoring, maintain mean arterial pressure greater than 65 mm mercury, vasopressors, intermittent or continuous central slash mixed venous oxygen saturation monitoring, balance oxygen supply and demand, Continuous ECG monitoring, circulatory assist devices, and venous thrombolysis prophylaxis. Under central nervous system, signs and symptoms are as follows. Acute change in neurologic status, fever, hepatic encephalopathy, seizures, confusion, disorientation, delirium, and failure to wean, prolonged rehabilitation. Management includes, evaluate for hepatic or metabolic encephalopathy, optimize cerebral blood flow, prevent secondary tissue ischemia, calcium channel blockers, to reduce cerebral vasospasm. Under endocrine system, signs and symptoms are as follows, hyperglycemia then results to hyperglycemia. Management includes, provide continuous infusion of insulin and glucose to maintain blood glucose 140 to 180 mg slash dl, or 7.77 to 10.0 millimol per liter. 
Under renal system. Signs and symptoms are as follows. Under prerenal, renal hyperperfusion. Blood urine nitrogen slash creatinine ratio is greater than 20 is to 1. Decreased urine sodium less than 20 mex per liter. Increased urine specific gravity greater than 1.020. Increased urine osmolality. And under intraranal, acute tubular necrosis. Blood urinatogen slash creatinine ratio is less than 10 is to 1 to 15 is to 1. Increased urine sodium greater than 20 mex per liter. Decreased urine osmolality. And urine specific gravity less than 1.01. Management includes diuretics, loop diuretics, for instance, furosemide Lasix, and may need to increase dosage due to decreased glomerular filtration rate. Under gastrointestinal system, signs and symptoms are as follows, mucosal ischemia, decreased intramucosal pH, potential translocation of gut bacteria, potential abdominal compartment syndrome. Hyperperfusion that results to decreased peristalsis, paralytic ileus, mucosal ulceration on endoscopy, and GI bleeding. Management includes stress ulcer prophylaxis, such as antacids, for instance, molux, proton pump inhibitors, for instance, omeprazole prilosec, and sucralfit, carafit. Monitor abdominal distension, intraabdominal pressures. Dietary consultation, enteral feedings, stimulate mucosal activity, and provide essential nutrients and optimal calories. Under hepatic system, signs and symptoms are as follows, bilirubin greater than 2 mg per dl, or 34 micromole per liter, increased liver enzymes, ALT, AST, and GGT, increased serum ammonia, decreased serum albumin, prealbumin, transferrin, jaundice, and hepatic encephalopathy. Management includes maintain adequate tissue perfusion, provide nutritional support, for instance, enteral feedings, and careful use of drugs metabolized by liver. And under hematologic system, signs and symptoms are as follows, increased bleeding times, increased PT and PTT, decreased platelet count, thrombocytopenia, Increased fibrin split products, and an increased D-dimer. Management includes, observe for bleeding from obvious and or occult sites, replace factors being lost, for instance, platelets, and minimize traumatic interventions, for instance, IM injections, and multiple venipunctures. Thank you for listening. Have a good day, and be safe. Agyamanak.